Well, hi all. I'm Tony. This is ASV to Badia. And as you may well know, we've been building a cruising sailboat for the last, what, six and a half years or so now. And uh, I believe that building stage is, is drawing to a close. Um, we launched the first launch back at the end of July last year conducted a couple of months of sea trials and now doing a few upgrades and, and getting her ready to sail further afield and uh, the planned launch post winter here uh, is six six weeks from now so it's all getting very close you may also know that um, a lot of this winter I've spent um, building a wind vane a homemade wind vane um, based on plans available from Alan over at uh, Wave Rover and uh, if you're interested in getting the plans he's selling them they're available from quite cheaply um, and I've been building it you know very much in my own style so uh, as I've done with everything as I did with the whole boat basically I, I've, I've adapted it to build it the way that I felt happy with that suited me um, if you look at the entire boat build, you'll see that I built the, the Benford Dory. It's a J. Benford designed dory. But I built her in a way that is, isn't the standard method. It was very much inspired by um, a fellow called Greg who built a Benford Dory called uh, Willow, which is still about the boat. I think he sold it, but the boat's still about. But I, very, I was very much inspired by his building method. So I built fixed stations and... Uh, and plank the boat up on those fixed stations whereas the standard Benford Dory technique is to use temporary frames and, and build it up that way um, and so the same idea he witters on the same idea applies to the wind vane in many ways in that I've, I've built this very much in my own style and uh, getting towards the end now there are some control lines involved in this wind vane two that are important uh, come up the tiller and I've put a couple of cam cleats on the tiller and the purpose of those two control lines is to be able to fix the trim tab element in the straight straight ahead position actually you could fix it in any position you wanted for if you're reversing for example or perhaps if the, if the uh, wind vane is not being used perhaps you just want to fix it in straight ahead or perhaps even slightly off straight ahead so you would reduce the amount of weather helm, for example, with the trim tab. I know that's something that Leo has talked about over on Tally Ho. So um, two lines come up either side of the tiller. They will run through a couple of guides, which I haven't put on yet, but they've got a couple of cam cleats on the tiller where you can fix those lines off to lock the trim tab in position. Just before we get to that though, I'd like to, like to interject. <laughs> Um, because one thing I've done this week, in fact I've been working on for years now, but I finished it this week, is that over on my website, and there's a link to my website in the video description and at the end of this video, I finally finished up, finished writing up the story of uh, Karen and I cruising in our first ever boat where we, we bought it in Vancouver, Canada and sailed around that area for a while and then down to Mexico, the Sea of Cortez, and uh, I've been writing up and using some of Karen's photos, um, that adventure back in the 90s, and yeah, I say, it's done, it's finished, so if you're interested in, in reading that, it's, it's to all intents and purposes a book, it has 10 chapters, it's finished on my website, The Miss Molly Adventures, go check it out. Then I've got a couple of the same cam cleats on the vane section. 
<clears throat> and there is one there, look. That you'll see soon. And they are the cam cleats. The lines that go through those cam cleats are the ones that engage the wind vane. And they go to the trim tab when it's not cleated off on the tiller, of course. And the vane then controls the trim tab. One of the big things that I spent a lot of time thinking about on this wind vane is how to make the lower bearing. You know I made the, I've got them here. You know I made these upper bearing blocks with aluminium straps and, and POM bearing material. And that's all very simple. And I spoke about that last week. But the lower one needs to be a different material. Um, aluminium under the waterline is not a good idea at all. Um, although, saying that, sail drive legs are aluminium alloy and, and we simply seal them with epoxy to keep the seawater away. But I've, throughout the build of the boat, I've, I've carried through a principle of not mixing metals under the waterline. All of the exposed metals I've got below the waterline are bronze, are simply only bronze exposed. The keel is a steel box filled with lead, but that's completely in encased in epoxy, thoroughly sealed. I say the sail drive legs, same story, completely sealed. So seawater should never contact the metals. And so exposed metal, again, is only bronze. And I've tried to stick with bronze for all fastenings under the waterline and throughout. So I didn't want to put another metal down below. Alan uses stainless, 316 stainless, for his block for the lower trim tab bearing. But again, I, I didn't want to do that because of galvanic corrosion issues, potentially. So after a lot of thought, I decided to make one up out of fiberglass. Because you remember, you may remember, <laughs> when I visited Frederick, who's building a, a Chris Moore John designed uh, hogfish a lot of his fittings are fiberglass and, and they're pretty impressive and solid so i thought do the same as the pin comes out the bottom of the trim tab and i wanted to, to make a bearing another pom block that that pin sits in and some device to support that So far, looks like that. The face ends up, hold for in the middle. Should be good to go. Beautiful. 
So I needed to make some straps that would mount that POM bush on the bottom of the rudder. And I made this, this got a bit damaged, but this beautiful paper template of the profile of the rudder, uh, the aft end of the rudder. And from that made this delightful wooden uh, male mold with, with the rudder profile there. And I clad it in some old polythene sheeting as a release agent and uh, set to work laying up some fiberglass on it. And I initially put six layers of, of glass tape around it in epoxy. I've used epoxy because I had epoxy. Uh, and then once that had set off, the next day got on, put 20 layers on one side, waited another day for that set off, turned it over, 20 on the other side. So all the way around, we finished up with 26 layers of, of glass tape in epoxy. And it's turned out like this. Here it is, the finished article. And I have to say, I'm very pleased with it. It's come out well, good and solid. No um, galvanic issues with that. Entirely plastic, basically, isn't it? Come out very well. That should be about right. And that wants to come on there, like that. If I was to grind a flat down there, and down there, then we would have something that wouldn't rotate. that sticking on there so it's preset up six of them Thank <laughs> you. 
saw movement. I certainly saw movement. Let's get this free. Yes. It's a decent thickness, looks good I think. Twenty of them. First, of Well, here it is. It's time to free it up from the mould. Um, looks good, I think. We'll set off. That's nice. Let's see if we can get it off. Oh, I feel that easy enough, really. Sandra, I think. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mitte. Lange bit of London. Very pleasant, eh? And that is it for this week. Thank you for watching. As ever, an enormous thank you. Massive thank you to the lovely people who support us on Patreon and via PayPal. This would not be possible without you. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.